Hi Year 12, this is a very short tutorial to help you prepare for Paper 2, Module A, Experience Through Language Distinctively Visual. We're going to use the word visual as a study tool. So your V will be vertigo. Your I into textuality. Your S symbolism. Oops. U, unusual tense. Your A, the subtitle, a pastoral. And your L, Language, because it's all about experience through language. So it's time to start having these sort of notes up all around your study area, car, bedroom, in your purse or wallet, so that wherever you are, you can be in a continual study mode. So have these placed even in the fridge, in the cupboard where you go for your mug or cup or glass. Wherever you go, if you have this up, it can be really, really helpful. And when you're nervous or anxious before the exam, you can just think visual, vertigo, intertextuality, symbolism, unusual tense, a pastoral and language. So drill yourself over and over in that. Uh, the way in which I would use this would be to um, a, spend a paragraph on the meaning of the title, vertigo as in that sense of um, dizziness and disorientation. Often it's described as a fear, of a fear of falling, but I think of it more as a sense of uh, being unsettled and uncomfortable and out of one's comfort zone. Intertextuality. This one's an essential in terms of um, the importance of the fire and the way in which Garanella was once called Ross's farm so <clears throat> which was based obviously the title of the Henry Lawson poem so the intertextuality helps inform the reader of the deeper purpose of the narrative symbolism the, the novella is rich with symbolism. My favourite symbol is um, the blue of Luke's jumper that he'd, he'd left on the bed as they fled from the fire and the way in which that pure woolen jumper caught the ember and saved their home. And the other favourite of mine in the novella is the she-oak um, that survived the fire also, that and every single choice of particular bird or particular plant is, if you pick out a few of them and have a bit of a read about them, the symbolism is there throughout. The unusual tense, um, first uh, 16, I think, pages of the novella, um, past tense, those sort of grim, that we've looked at very closely, those grim um, scenes in the, in the city. And from 
the time that they move onwards, the rest of the novel novella is told in present tense, highly unusual and highly effective for characters that, with vertigo, are swirling in a sense of um, unease and discontent to be taken into the present. Um, the inclusion in the title of Vertigo, a pastoral, this is a um, rich tradition in Australian literature that started with, uh, or not started, but was is most well known now in the works of Henry Lawson. And the pastoral was written from the rural perspective in order to give city dwellers an insight into how authentic and rich and beautiful and idealised rural life could be. So it's it's a it's a construct and I think that Amanda Laurie's done a beautiful, beautiful job of creating a modern pastoral. Uh, and our last one, language. You've got all of the visual imagery, the similes, the metaphors, you've got some beautiful assonance and personification, um and alliteration, you've got all of those rich techniques that we've looked at in our close studies of different sections. So visual, vertigo, intertextuality, symbolism, unusual tense, a pastoral language. So if you can even think up a little song, um, that can be helpful too. So onwards and upwards as we keep approaching paper two.